All right, JD here. Just want to say thank you so much for your interest in this video, the five most underrated NBA players in the 80s. Thank you so much. But before I begin, I just want to go ahead, ask you to kind of subscribe, like, share, and I greatly appreciate it. And thank you so much for the support. So, the five most underrated NBA players in the 80s. And there really isn't a definitive way to rate players as who actually rates these players, as this is just a list of five players who I think didn't get the respect they deserved or are kind of forgotten and not well remembered. And I did ask for some lists and I did, excuse me, I did get some great lists from some people. So I'll give shout outs to those people and show those lists later on in this video. So thank you so very much. Now the 80s, it's the era of Bird, Magic, and Jordan coming to the league. And if I was in my basketball watching prime during the 80s, I probably would have been a little annoyed because it was just Celtics, Lakers. So let me start off with number five. It's actually a tie. Uh, with the Dallas Mavericks backcourt in the 80s of Derek Carper and Rolando Blackman. I didn't know which one to put here, so I just put both of them. I will start with Rolando Blackman, who was a really good scorer, had um, seasons with the Mavericks where he was averaging 20 a game. And he could also play some defense. And when you talk about the best shooting guards in the 80s, it might take some time before someone gets Rolando Blackman. And I just uh, really thought he was a really good player in the 80s. And Derek Carper. Derek Carper is one of the better point guards in the league in the 80s. Uh, get you in the high teens of points, averaging about uh, excuse me, averaging about seven assists per game. He's also a really good defender, perhaps the best hand checker ever. And that's and that's not a bad thing. Those were just the rules back then. And it was like after the 94 finals where Derek Harper was hand checking Kenny Smith to death that decided to have the officials enforce the hand checking rules uh, more frequently. So Derek Carper, really good basketball player in the 80s and in the early 90s then. And then for number four, I'm going to go with Kelly Chapuka. Now, Kelly Chapuka with the Pistons, his first three years, he came in with Isaiah Thomas. He was a really good score. In fact, he averaged over 26 a game during the second year in the NBA, but then was traded away to the Utah Jazz. Now, with the Jazz, they wanted to have the offense go through Stockton and Malone, and Kelly Chapuka's stats really dipped. But then he went to the Charlotte Hornets, and this is where I really remembered Kelly Chapuka. And it was with the expansion Hornets. It just seemed like a one-man team, as he was just seemed like he was taking all the shots when I saw him in a game against the Bulls. Uh, but anyways, it just uh, Kelly Chapuka when he played with the Hornets, he seemed like a guy you would see at the men's league. That's uh, the Hornets were picking players from the men's league or something like that with his hair, how he had the biker shorts, and he looked older than like being in his thirties. But Kelly Chapuka, really good score in the eighties, very underrated, I thought. Number three. Going with the X-Man, Xavier McDaniel, wonderful personality, I liked his personality. Also known as a tough guy, and I put him here as very underrated because, like I said, known as a tough guy, but he could score, he could also rebound. His career kind of declined rapidly because of injuries, but with the Sonics, he was a really good player, and um, he's a very good rebounder, very good scorer, and I really like Xavier McDaniel as a player. Number two, I got some people who commented on this player, and that's Tom Chambers. Tom Chambers, six foot ten, really athletic, could run and dunk, uh, could shoot from the outside at six foot ten. Maybe not a strong rebounder or a strong defender, but uh, one of two players along Antoine Jameson who scored over twenty thousand career points, who is eligible for excuse me, who is eligible for the Hall of Fame, but has not been elected to the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. So Tom Chambers, really, a uh, really good player, really good score, also one scored six points a game. And the most underrated NBA player in the 80s. And this one I didn't have to think about at all. Um, a very easy choice for me. And that is Sidney Moncrief. Now, Sidney Moncrief, it's amazing to me how long it took for him to get elected into the Basketball Hall of Fame. It took until 2019, which to me is just crazy. He was a really good two-way player defensively and offensively. In fact, one year, he led the NBA in offensive rating according to the statistics on Basketball Reference. And two-time defensive player of the league um, in the 80s. Uh, just a great player. And like I said, just surprising that it took him so long for him to get elected into the Smith Basketball Hall of Fame. And he was on those great Bucks teams that just couldn't get past the 76ers and Celtics. Did make three conference finals with the Bucks. So uh, much love to Sidney Moncrief. Really good. So those are my five most underrated NBA players of the 80s. Thank you so much for taking a look at that. And I just want to get to some lists that were submitted to me. And really great lists and I really like them and perhaps are better than mine. So first, um, the first list I want to talk about is John Martin, his list. He had Ralph Sampson, Bernard King and Mark Eaton and Ralph Sampson he played like he was healthy I would say for three years in the NBA I wish I could have seen him at Virginia where in a in excuse me in the 80s the ACC just had so many great players and he was like the top player in the 80s of the ACC 
And then also Bernard King, Bernard King, man, he could score. I'm going to get to him more later on. And then also Mark Eaton. When it comes to greatest shot blockers ever, I wonder how long it takes for people to get to Mark Eaton, but just a tremendous shot blocker in the 80s for the Jazz. So a great list right there. Also, JVR Marez. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Great list here. I really liked it with Jamal Abdul Latif. Now, to be honest, I did not know Jamal Wilkes, aka Silk, um, converted to Islam. And um, he decided to keep his surname of uh, Wilkes. So he's always Jamal Wilkes. I didn't know uh, his name was Jamal Abdul Latif. He also had Bernard King. Now, Bernard King, tremendous with the Knicks. Obviously, a great score. Had a devastating knee injury. I did not know this when I was looking at this, but he averaged late in his career. I think it was, it was, it was his second to last season in the NBA with the Washington Bullets. He actually averaged over 28 points per game, which is quite impressive. I did not know about that. Um, also, Alex English, he put up some gaudy numbers while with the Denver Nuggets with that up uh, with that up tempo offense. So, uh, Alex English, he could have to score great. James Worthy. Now, he didn't put up the gaudy scoring numbers as Alex English, but I'll say this about James Worthy: when he was isolated on the wing, it was tough to guard him. I mean, he could really isolate and score. And then Marcus Johnson, Marcus Johnson, really good on those Bucks teams with Sidney Moncrief. Uh, some of you might know from him for his acting, like White Men, uh, White Men Can't Jump. I remember an episode of uh, episode of Hang Time and an episode of uh, the Sinbad Show. Yes, I was one of the people that did watch the Sinbad Show. If you looked at the ratings of the Sinbad Show, you saw a rating of one or one household in Chicago. That's probably me, as they did watch it. And he was funny in that episode. But anyways, Marcus Johnson, great choices right there. Um, Rolly Rod 14 wanted me to mention Drazen Petrovic, who was drafted in the 80s, but... <clears throat> Really came to his own in the 90s. And I don't know much about his career. I know he was well decorated in Europe um, for Drazen Petrovic. He was very talented. And it would have been nice to see him come to USA earlier. Wish we could have seen him uh, play more in the NBA. So Drazen Petrovic, I like that choice. And then Isaac wanted me to mention Mark Price. I made a most underrated list in the 90s. And I didn't put Mark Price there. He was on Dream Team 2. And I don't know why I didn't put him here for this list. But tremendous talent. I hope to do a video about the Cavs in the late 80s and early 90s soon, as that team really built a solid team that uh, could t could t uh, excuse me could contend for championships, but it didn't quite work out. And like I said, just thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate everything. Thank you so much. You know, who are your top five most underrated NBA players in the 80s? Go ahead, make your list down below in the comments. I'm um, like I said, there's not a right or wrong answers. I love the list that I got. And uh, thank you so much. Go ahead, subscribe, like, share. Thank you so much. Go ahead, appreciate it. And take care. Thank you so much.